winter time in the southeast what does that mean it means that the weather is never going to be the same we got snow one day we got 70 degrees and sunny we got a lot of rain and wind you just never know what you're going to be what you're going to be uh, dealt any given day on the water but one thing's for sure as we start transitioning from winter time to early spring we got the pre-spawn pre-spawn is that time of year where those fish packed on that weight they're starting to make the move getting ready to spawn over the next month or so and really over the next few months depending on what body of water you're on but it's some of the best fishing of the year it can be difficult sometimes but what i'm going to do today is i'm going to give you all some of my favorite baits day in day out that'll hopefully it'll help you out on the water when you're fishing the right, spring i had to pick my top five techniques in the pre-spawn time of year you know, like i said if you make this transition from winter to spring we have a lot of variation in weather I'm gonna give y'all five techniques that are probably my favorite for spotted bass, but these techniques, you'll be surprised, they're not all finesse techniques. A lot of them will carry over where you can catch both species of fish with them. Some of them are power techniques. First one being a crankbait. A crankbait is always a good option in the springtime. You know, I, I will shift a lot of my colors towards bluegill and crawfish type colors. You can see that right there, just a little red craw. Uh, you know, sometimes throw like a bluegill style, style color. Now your variation of depth is gonna depend on the scenario that you're fishing. If you're fishing shallow in some pockets, you might wanna opt for a more shallow running bait. One thing about a crankbait is I typically, most of the time, prefer something that's got a little bit more of a tighter action in the springtime. Water's typically cool, it's just warming up. So tighter action in most scenarios is gonna work pretty good. Unless you're fishing in some really dirty water, then sometimes you may uh, shift towards something a little more vibration. That's kind of like this red crankbait here. Really dirty water. Balsa bait with a little wider lips. Got a little bit more action to it. It's a crankbait. That's, uh, that's one. These are in no particular order. Now another technique, if you follow along or if you fished with me before, if you've seen any videos, uh, underspin is deadly in the spring. Dirty water, clear water, preferably in clear water, but in some stain, I won't say very dirty or muddy, but in some stained water, you can catch them as well. A lot of times you're gonna get the runoff in the back of the pockets from all the rain and, and wind that we get in the springtime. Maybe switch your color to something a little brighter or a white, maybe a little chartreuse. Uh, in the clear water, I prefer smoky shad, half ounce and three eighths. Underspin is a killer, fish it slow. Low gear ratio reel is key and a pretty soft tip rod. Let it load up, you're not trying to set the hook when you feel those bites. Let the fish get it and just slowly load up on them underspin is a good choice and is always a good choice just about all year long when you're fishing for spotted bass now another technique some of these techniques obviously most of them are moving baits underspin is designed to fish really slow it's a lot different than a spinner bait so it's a slow presentation most most every time now it, one of my favorite techniques hands down uh, just in bass fishing in general, but definitely with spotted bass, is a jerk bait. You cannot go wrong with a jerk bait. When you're talking uh, spotted bass or, or smallmouth, they react to jerk baits. Uh, there's just something about that that makes them, it just triggers that strike. Now, whether it be uh, a hard body jerk bait or a soft plastic jerk bait, both of them are very effective, but I like the hard bait because I got a little bit of sound, you can throw it well in the wind and I can move it fast, I can move it slow. Now, on this one right here specifically, I typically always upgrade my hooks to something a little bit thicker wire, and sometimes I may even up the size if I'm trying to get it to suspend. And if I can't get it to suspend that way, then I may add some weight strips. But jerk bait is your friend in the springtime. You can throw it in those windy days, fish it first thing in the morning, pop it slow. Vary your cadence until you find the right rhythm that day because a lot of times as the water warms up they may bite it on a faster you know faster jerk but if it's super cold dark day uh, you know like I said earlier you get some snow one week you got it it's 30 degrees and the next week it's 70 so vary your cadence to the day let them tell you what they want I like to throw it on a 7 to 1 reel throw it on 12 pound fluorocarbon um, sometimes I may even throw it on 15 I'm not trying to get it very deep. 15 pound test gives me more control over a fish, swing them in the boat, not worried about it. 
Now on the opposite end of that spectrum, if I'm fishing in really, really clear water, maybe I'm trying to get it down a little bit deeper. I may even opt for 10 pound test, but fluorocarbon's key on that. You're gonna get better action out of your bait. You're also gonna get better hookups on those fish. Fluorocarbon is definitely key on really all of these techniques right here. Now, moving on down the line, I'm gonna switch gears on you, going to something that is more of a finesse presentation is this right here is a z-man zinkers uh, it's a soft plastic stick bait cinco style bait now the zinkers is a little bit different though very similar in profile and shape the cool thing about this one is i've got i've got a lot of experience with this bait this is a bait that i rely on a lot on a couple of different uh, you know heads or, or styles of different ways of rigging it i like it on shaky heads I like it on wacky rigs Right here, I've got it on a Nico or Naco, however you want to say it, style rig. A little weight in the bottom, a little wacky hook in the middle of the bait. This is actually the uh, Nico Shrooms weight from Z-Man. It's got an awesome little pin on it. It'll stick up there and actually hold really well in the elastic, so you don't have to worry about firing it off or, or slinging it off. It holds real well in there. Now, this bait, when you're talking spotted bass, a couple reasons I like it. It's a little bit thicker profile over some of the other uh, you know, worm variations. So I can feel it good if I'm fishing it deep, if I'm fishing it in the wind. You got a lot of feel here. Also, that little bit bigger, bigger body. It's not real big, but just a little thicker, fatter body. In my opinion, it helps weed out some of those smaller fish. Now, I'm not gonna say you won't catch small fish on it. Uh, a worm is just one of those baits that's gonna get a lot of bites. You'll catch a small one, you'll catch a big one with it. It's very effective. But to me, it's, it's something that I can fish in just about all different scenarios. If I'm fishing it deep, no problem. If I'm fishing it shallow, no problem. I might put a lighter weight in it, skip it around, but just a very versatile bait. Uh, a lot of different colors works. Dark day to day, I've got, I got Bama Bug, which is a green pumpkin and a little bit of June Bug kind of mix, just a good natural color. It's natural, but it's still got a dark you know, profile. So on a dark day, fish can see it pretty well. But experiment with some different colors. Uh, a lot of times variations of greens and browns are going to work the best, but point being, this is just a worm that you can rig in a lot of different ways, a lot of different techniques. It's going to get bit for you. And with the zinker specifically, I don't know if you can see here, like how much, how soft that is and how much movement it, is, it has. It's also you got a last tech, but this one has salt also. So. It doesn't stand necessarily straight up, but it will tilt up on the bottom. I promise you, if you spend a little time with that, that's going to get you more bites. It's not just a, a pitch on throwing their worm. This one right here gets bit better than the other ones when you are fishing in this type of stuff. 100%, I believe, because it stands up off the bottom, it shows them something a little bit different. With a regular salt worm, it lays over on the bottom when it's motionless. So keep that in mind. And another little tip about this guy, you may have seen this tip before, a lot of times when I'm wacky hooking it, I will even double hook it. So I'll pull the, the point right back under there and then kind of get grab that plastic twice. Helps keep it on there all day. No need for an O-ring. I, I personally prefer just the, uh, the, the hook hooked right through the middle like that with no O-ring. And if some guys like O-rings, hey, whatever works for you, stick with that. But I just kind of double hook it there. Very versatile bait one that I, uh, I really throw a lot throughout the year and works great. Large mouth, small mouth, spotted bass, all the above. It's a good one. Uh, last thing on that is on all my finesse setups, I generally roll with 15 to 20 pound braided line. Just good quality braided line is going to work really well for you. I like some, some lines too if I'm fishing them you know, in kind of some off water or a darker day, I like throwing some line that has a little bit of color to it, whether it's blue, yellow, something like that. Um, I've really uh, kind of become fond of that where I can see it. If I've got a long cast out deep water, I can just visually keep track of my line. Now there are scenarios where if I'm drop shotting in the summer and I'm, I'm ultra finesse and, and real clear water, I may go to a braided line that's got, it's a little more natural, a green or a, a dark gray or something like that. But springtime, Water's a little off color. Something I can see, high vis is gonna be good. I use a longer leader most of the time, 10 to 15 foot, um, eight to 10 pound test fluorocarbon. 
fluorocarbon is key on this technique also. So get you a, uh, if nothing else, get you a bag of those because I promise you, you'll get filled. So last but certainly not least, it's the old chatterbait. Chatterbait is arguably probably won more money in fishing competitions in the past decade or so than any other bait. You know, that is a bait that really took the fishing industry by storm. And now Z-Man has so many different variations of a chatterbait that you can find one for any scenario, any way that you want to fish with it. This one right here is a Project Z, one you may not have even heard about. It's been around for a few years, but it's got a really, it's got a different style um, connection there. Still the direct connection that the chatterbait's known for, but the action of the blade is a little bit different there. And this is a real heavy model one ounce model so I can fish it really deep. It's real windy where I was throwing it here recently and got a little razor shad on the back, just a natural little shad, soft body, segmented tail, real natural action. I can fish this thing deep, I can slow roll it, I can even yo-yo it up. I'm tucked out of the wind right now, but got high water, got a lot of wind, chatterbait's always a good option. You can you know, fish a lighter version, a 3 8 or a half, you can fish them up shallow, fish them in dirty water, fish them in clean water, it's just a technique that they love to bite in the springtime. Bite it all year, definitely in the spring. So anytime that you get around pre-spawn fish, dealing with fish that are, sometimes I joke around and say they're kind of mad at the world some days. They're getting ready to spawn, they're moving up. They can be easily triggered, sometimes by vibration and sound can trigger those fish. So a lot of times it's popular to throw lipless style baits, trap fishing in the springtime, different lakes all across the country. That sound, that, that action gets them to react to it. Very much why a chatterbait works really well is all, also, same thing with your crankbaits and jerkbaits. A lot of times when they hit off something, they, they deflect, you get that erratic action. That's what triggers those fish to bite. So chatterbait is a killer option. And it's another reason why I picked this bait for kind of my top five, just all across the board, spotted bass, is because it's so versatile. You got heavy models, I can fish deep. Natural colors, I can fish in clear water, all the way to the other end of the things where you can throw reds and, and black and blue and, and stuff like that if you're fishing in stained water. So spotted bass specifically are a species in the southeast that live from ultra clear deep water all the way to the Coosa River in Alabama where they are you know, very dirty, muddy water fish, shallow oriented. So these baits right here, some of them may surprise you that it's probably my, that's my top five across the board because these baits, you'll be able to find one that'll work for you in any scenario. So it's not just finesse fishing we're talking about spotted bass. That's a big deal, but it's not the end all. Hopefully these techniques can help you out when you're out there fishing the spring. There's a lot of other baits that work really well for them too. Everything can be so situational and dependent on the weather and the current conditions that you've got in the body of water that you're fishing. But I promise you that some variation of these baits will catch fish for you this spring when you're out there fishing for spotted bass.